At this point you might want to add some lights into the area. Right now we're using the view models fully lit to see everything very clearly. If we toggle that off we can see things are a little bit darker and in fact what we've got there is probably only lit by the sun. When generating lighting it's a good idea to leave um, view models fully lit off so that you're not seeing things brighter than they really are in game. The first thing you want to check is that your, your sun is set up how you want it to be. On exportable area properties, which is just next to the create exportable area, we can have a look at the properties of the sun. I'm going to choose a sun color that's not quite so white. Um, generally you want sun to be white because otherwise everything will look a bit too colored. Um, but I'm going to use a slightly orangey um, tinted sun um, just to give it a little bit more interesting color. Uh, something like that. To see the effect of the sun um, on the game models, you'll need to render your light maps. Light maps are something that is done out, um, outside of the game and it's done entirely in the toolset and allows your models to be lit using more complicated algorithms that would otherwise be too processor intensive in the game. So we'll calculate those now using the render light maps button. I've now turned off all my visual aids and now that we've rendered light maps we can click the display light maps on off button to see what the effects of our um, light map baking process has had. We can see now that our sun is lighting up the back face and side face of this house quite strongly and the other sides are left in pretty much absolute darkness. It's also casting a very strong shadow across this part of the terrain where the roof line of the building is. Now because we are expecting our player to be on this side of the building we probably don't want to be lighting up the back face so we need to change the position of the sun in the sky. Now I say position of the sun in the sky, that's actually a bit of a misconception. There is no such thing as the sun's position in Dragon Age, there's only its direction. Um, so we need to change that direction. We can do that by going to exportable area properties, clicking the set sunlight button and rotating it around. Here we can see in real time roughly which way it's facing and we want to bring it around so it's lighting up. Um, I'm going to turn off uh, display light maps on off because that's kind of throwing me off a bit. Um, and yeah, we need to point it from this direction. So now we can see that this side's the one that's in darkness. Now what may confuse you here is if you turn the light maps back on, we're still seeing the shadow in the same place. That's because we need to render our light maps again. Whenever you make a change to any um, baked light, which includes sunlight and any ambient baked lights you may have, um, or, or just baked lights, um, you need to change, you need to click the uh, render light maps button. Um, and if you already had uh, light maps toggled on, then you need to toggle it off again and back on to see the effect of the changes. So now we've re rendered our light maps, let's turn the light map display it back on again, and we can actually see now this side of the house and the other side is in darkness, which is much better. Our hills here are casting shadows across the lake, which is, well, it's okay. One thing worth noting is that vegetation does not um, cast or receive any baked light um, or shadows, which means that we don't actually get shadows behind any of our trees here, which is a shame, but it's just one limitation of the engine we're going to have to accept. There's nothing we can do about it. Okay, just to show you the, some other types of light, I'm going to start adding some in now. Right-click, insert new light. Useful lights, and one you should probably have in every level, um, are the ambient lights. Now, you only need one per level. In light type, change the type to um, ambient baked. Now this is a light which affects absolutely everything in the scene. It doesn't matter how big or small you make this, um, nor how intense you make it. It's the colour that everything has as a bare minimum. It's a good idea not to give this a strong colour again, like with your sun, because otherwise things will look extremely um, unusual. Um, so at best I'm going to give it a slight tint. Um, and we're not going to make it too bright, because otherwise we end up everything looking too bright. Okay, that's one light type. Um, so that's another baked light type. If you want to add more baked lights, you can do so. Um, those tend to be um, either point or spot, um, depending on whether you want a spotlight or a point light. No. Another important light type to use is the real-time lights. Now these are lights that do make changes in the game. So if we've got maybe a torch or something, um, it's useful to have one there. Um, so use point static light to do this and uh, position it where you want it and you can see changes in the tool set of the light as we go along. So you can see I'm changing the brightness of this kind of area here. You can use this either subtly um, to increase 
um, right where you want to draw a player's attention, or you can actually add it to things that genuinely do emit light, like torches and campfires, um, in which case you might want to use the animated light type, um, which allows it to flip. You should have a player around with the colour and the colour intensity to increase the brightness. Here I'm going to set it up really high, so you can see it's making a very strong light there. We probably don't want it so high, um, two at most, really particularly as we haven't actually got a reason for this light to be here. I'm really just showing it to you, um, showing you that, that it's possible. Um, you can also do a similar thing by adding lots of um, point baked lights, and these will generate shadows in the same way that our sun did. Whenever you've got water in a level, it's a good idea to add a light probe. Um, a light probe essentially says that um, at this point in the level, um, these are the kind of reflections we might be seeing and it basically takes a screenshot if you like of the surrounding environment so that when you look at the reflection in game you'll see um, something that looks like the reflection that should be there so it's a good idea to place one in the middle of pa big patches of water to insert one right click on terrain world insert new light probe and it's a little bit too low now I'll, I'll raise it up a bit I'm going to turn back on uh, view models fully lit and turn off light maps just so that we can see what we're doing a little bit better. Now the light probe looks like a peculiar sphere with arrows on it. Don't worry too much about that, that's just how it looks. Um, you won't see this in the game, but you will see the reflections in the game, which is the whole point of this little exercise. So place it roughly in the middle of your water and click on render light, map, uh, light probes. Similar to rendering your light maps, this is done um, in the toolset only and saves on processing time in the game. To see the effect of your light, uh, light probes, click on display light maps on off and we'll be able to see now that we've got sort of trees in our reflection and hopefully, yes, a building there, which makes a, a lovely little set of reflections for our water and our water looks much nicer.